I hope you don't mind if I say that I love you. Today I'm so excited because I'm bringing you along as I prepare all four delicious yet super simple meals for a beautiful Rosh Hashanah. The menu will include four meat dishes that can be adapted to be vegetarian, all side dishes, 10 salads, and an amazing dessert with of course the help of my daughters, as well as some of my round challah shaping ideas. If you're new here, hi, my name is Sarah Monka, and on my channel I share all facets of my orthodox Sephardic Jewish life as a full-time working mom with small kiddos. So don't forget to leave this video a big thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. Let me put on a pretty tickle and let's jump into it. As you already know, to save time and focus more on spending time with my family than with my kitchen, I will bake and cook many items at the same time and today I will start with my cooked salads. I will preheat my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit and I will wash all my beets to remove all the dirt and possible insects. I will use my scrub daddy veggie brush and it does an amazing job but I do give it black eyes every time I use them with my beets. Once washed, I will get some aluminum foil and I will wrap the beets in it. Roasting the beets makes the beets so much sweeter compared to boiling them, which is one of our goals on Rosh Hashanah, to eat food that are sweeter, to have a sweet new year. On a side note, if you are worried about the aluminum foil I'm using, I will recycle it as it is per minute where I live. Once all the beets are covered with aluminum foil, I will place them on a cookie sheet and set them aside. For the second cooked salad, I will add two cans of diced tomatoes in a baking pan, making sure to add all the liquid. Then I will add some salt, some paprika, and of course I'm going to add some honey because we are making all of these beautiful salads for Rosh Hashanah. I will mix everything to make sure all the spices are fully incorporated. Then I will cover it with a piece of aluminum foil, making sure to leave an opening. This opening is so important because it will let the water evaporate to give the yummiest chukchuka or salad cuite or madbura. Then I will place everything in the oven. The beets will go on the top grill. Then I will take the tomato salad and I will place it on a baking sheet to make sure that if there's any splash, it will go on the baking sheet and not in the oven. I will let them bake for about 45 to 60 minutes and I will check on them at the 30 minutes mark to see how everything is baking, especially with the cooked Moroccan tomato salad. In a small food processor, I will add one diced onion, making sure to spill half of it outside the bowl with grace and panache. Then I will add my garlic. Here I'm going to add three cloves, but you can adapt the amount according to your taste. Then I will add some parsley, but you could definitely use coriander instead or fresh coriander or fresh parsley. I will pulse the mixture until everything is minced, which will take about 30 seconds. Once that it is completely mixed, I will set everything aside. In a separate bowl, I add my minced meat. Here I'm using veal, but you could use beef or lamb. Everything will work perfectly with this recipe. I add about three small packages. Then I will use my magical meat wand to break the meat and that will make it so much more tender. Once it is completely mixed, I will add three egg yolks, making sure there are no blood spot in them. I add the breadcrumbs. Today I'm using gluten-free breadcrumbs, but you can use regular breadcrumbs and sometimes I will use plain sliced bread and I will leave all the ways that I use the bread in the recipe below the video. I add the herb, the garlic and onion mix. I add the spices, so onion powder, cumin, some coriander as well and some salt. Once again, I will mix everything until fully combined using my magic meat wand. Once fully incorporated, I will cover the bowl with a reusable silicone cover to reduce my use of plastic wrap. To be honest, I'm not sure I'm in love with it because it simply does not stick well to the bowl. Maybe it's me doing something wrong. Please let me know in the comments below what has been your experience and how I can fall in love with this. <laughs> Once covered, I will leave it in the fridge for about 30 minutes. While the meat is in the fridge, I will start my children's favorite meat for Rosh Hashanah, the sweet and sour delight. I start by cutting my meat in strips. 
Here I'm using veal shoulder, but you could use beef or lamb. And if you prefer to use a vegetarian option, you could use extra firm tofu because this recipe works perfectly with it as well. In the bowl where I have my meat, I will add my soy sauce, my orange juice, I will add my minced garlic. I am not sure this is my favorite garlic pressed. Maybe you have a favorite brand? Let me know in the comments below. I will add some dark maple syrup to have a deeper flavor. Then I'm gonna add some rice vinegar, some sugar, some Dijon mustard, sesame oil, olive oil, and I will grate some ginger to add a bit of a zing and also the orange zest to add a bit of a wow. I mix everything together, then I will cover it and leave it in the fridge for 30 to 45 minutes. While it is marinating, I will start my other salads. Because on Rosh Hashanah we have the tradition to eat sweet foods to have a sweet new year, I could not resist and we had to do our favorite mango salad. I take a ripe mango and to know it is ripe, I press my finger on the top. If it leaves an imprint, I know it's ready. Then I will cut the mango in cubes. I will add some lime juice, then some cubed sweet bell peppers, red onions, salt, coriander, and some honey if the mangoes are too tart. I mix everything and I will refrigerate it and enjoy it on Rosh Hashanah. The next salad is so easy and delicious, especially on a warm challah. I take a can of pitted olive and I drain them and I will add them to a small food processor. I will pulse it until the olives are grossly chopped. I will then add some olive oil, close the small food processor, and I will let the food processor run for about 30 to 60 seconds. I will then add some garlic, then I will close it again and process it until it is fully smooth. I will transfer the olive dip in the glass container, cover it, and I will serve it on Rosh Hashanah. For my next salad, I will do a citrus salad. I will cut my oranges in triangles. Here I only had blood oranges. I will add some parsley, finely minced red onions, salt, honey, mix everything, and I will leave it in the fridge until we're ready to eat it. After cleaning my celery that had a lot of visitors on it, I cut my celery in thin slices. I will also cut a green apple, add some lemon juice on top of it, and I will add my dressing made of mayo, lemon juice, salt, and garlic on the side, and I will combine all ingredients just before serving it on Rosh Hashanah. I take a break from my salads and I will do my first side dish, some couscous. In a bowl, I will add my couscous. Here I'm using medium grain, and I will add some oil, I will also add some salt to taste. And here is the secret for the perfect couscous. I will massage the oil on every grain of couscous. This will allow the grain of couscous to stay separated. I will also add a tablespoon of lemon juice and to get the maximum amount of juice from my lemon, I will roll it on my working surface to break the pulp inside and liberate more juice. Then I will add it to my couscous. I mix everything again. Then I will add my boiling water. I will cover it and let it sit for about five minutes. And that's it. I will continue with my meat number three and I will take out my pressure cooker. And if you do not like the pressure cooker, you can use your instant pot or bake it and I will leave the cooking instruction in the description box below. For my meat number three, I will do a roast. Here I'm using a marinated roast and I will cook it without removing the spices to create a deeper flavor and also to use the cooking water as a base for a soup. I will place my roast in the pressure cooker, then I will cover it with water. I close the lid and place it on high heat until it does psh very scientific, I know. And then I will turn down the heat to medium low and let it cook for 45 minutes. I will now prepare the sauce for my meatballs. In a preheated pan, I will add some olive oil. Then I will add my thinly sliced onions. I'm preparing my sauce now because the meatballs have been sitting in the fridge for more than 30 minutes. 
I will mix everything and let it cook until the onions are colored, which will take two to three minutes. During that time, I will take five celery stalks and I will cut them in sticks. I love cutting celery in sticks because it reminds me of cooking with my grandmother. I think that intergenerational cooking is so precious and important. What do you think? Do you have any memory of cooking with a loved one? Let me know in the comments below. I add my celery once the onions are golden. I will add some onion powder, some curcuma, salt. I will mix everything and let it cook until fragrant, so about 30 to 60 seconds. I will add one cup of water to the pan to deglaze the sauce, making sure to scrape the bottom to get all the yumminess. I will let it cook uncovered for 5 to 10 minutes on low medium heat. By now my beets should be ready because they were on the smaller side. I make sure they are ready by inserting the blade of a knife in the beet. If it penetrates it easily, like this, it is fully ready. I will let them cool down fully and then I will pack them away as I will only cut them in pieces or slices and add the dressing before serving them. By leaving them complete, I can freeze them to extend their freshness. I take a moment to check on my Moroccan cooked tomato salad and I see there is too much liquid left so I will put it back in the oven for another 5 to 10 minutes and then I will check on it again. While it's baking, I will do my meatballs or boulettes and I take them out of the fridge because rolling cold meatballs is easier than when they are at room temperature. One of my super tricks to have perfectly smooth meatballs is that I will wet my hands and fingers with water before I roll my meatballs. This will allow for the meatballs to have a beautiful smooth texture on the outside and will not stick to my hands. That is a trick my grandmother shared with me and I would love to know, what is your favorite trick your mother or grandmother taught you in the kitchen, let me know in the comments below. Rolling the meatballs takes a few minutes but I find that this time is therapeutic as I can prepare my food thinking about my family, my friends, all the people for whom I'm preparing them and hopefully for them to feel the extra ingredients that is love in all the food I make for them. I smell the tomato salad is calling me, so when I check on it, I see that the water has evaporated enough, so I will simply mix it and let it cool down fully. Because the oven is free, I will use it for my next two side dishes. I will cut potatoes in large chunks and then I will place them on cookie sheets lined with silicone mats. I will add some olive oil on both sides. Then I will do two different flavors. On one side, I will add some paprika, some garlic, and some salt. And on the other side, I will add some chicken soup base, salt, and parsley. I will mix both sides, making sure I wash my hands between the two, not to mix the flavors. Once they are fully mixed, I will put them aside and I will do my other side dish. I like to use in our Rosh Hashanah meals what we bought for the 8 foods we eat on Rosh Hashanah to have a great year and if you did not see the video I will leave the link in the description box above and the description box below. So I will simply cut my acorn squash in slices, add some oil, salt and maple syrup and then I will put it in the oven with the potatoes at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about 30 to 40 minutes. I will take the meatballs and add them to the sauce. I don't know about you, but I really feel we eat with the eyes first. So even when I'm cooking, I will make a design with my food to be pleasing to the eyes. Maybe it's just me and one of my craziness? Most probably. Once I have placed them, I will cover them with my makeshift splash guard covered with aluminum foil. Then I will cook them for 40 to 50 minutes basting the meatballs regularly. While the meatballs are cooking, I will prepare my other side dish. I will make green string beans. I will wash them, rinse them and remove their tips. I will simply cook them for about 5 minutes covered with olive oil, salt and garlic. It is time to baste my meatballs and to do that I will tilt the pan and gather the cooking juice and baste all my meatballs that will ensure they stay delicious and moist. I put it back to cook another 10 to 15 minutes before the next basting session. 
It is time to start my fourth meat for our Rosh Hashanah menu. I will place my cubed meat in a bowl and I will set it aside. In a smaller bowl, I will add some kosher salt, paprika, cinnamon, as well as cumin. I will put half of the mixture on the meat. Then I will mix everything until every piece of meat is covered with the spices. I will put aside my bowl. Then I will dice finely a medium onion using my favorite trick not to cry while cutting the onion, which is to place a wet paper towel on the cutting board. Once my onion is diced, I will place it in a hot pan that contains vegan butter. I will then mix everything and let it cook until golden. While it is cooking, I will cut 5 carrots in thick slices. I don't know about you, but when I'm able to cut the carrot in regular sized pieces and rapidly, I feel a little bit like a chef. But maybe it's only me? The onions are already golden and I will add tomato paste about 2 tablespoons. Once I have added my tomato paste, I will mix everything continuously for about 2-3 to three minutes. I will let it cook until I see some caramelized tomato paste at the bottom of my pan, like this. Then I know it is time to add my water to deglaze my pan and scrape off all that caramelized yumminess. To accelerate the cooking process, I will deglaze my pan with boiling water. I will mix everything, then I will let it come to a small boil. I will add my meat and then the rest of the spices. I will mix everything and then I will add a head of garlic that was thoroughly washed and checked to make sure it is bug free. I will cover the pan and let my meat cook covered on medium to low heat for about 45 minutes. We will then start our Rosh Hashanah dessert. Leah will put in a bowl some non-dairy whipped cream then she will add some eggs. Here we're using regular eggs, but you can absolutely use egg replacement and I will leave options in the description box below and in the recipe. She will then add some sugar, some vanilla extract, and then Leah will mix everything until it forms firm peaks. She will add her ice cream base in a bowl. She will take about two large scoops. She shakes it to equalize it. She will then take some chocolate syrup and she will start forming lines. Then she will take a small skewer and pass the skewer through the line to create like a millefeuille effect. She will repeat the process until all the lines are rendered more artistic. She will add more ice cream and she will redo the same process. Isn't it beautiful? I'm so proud of her. Please let her know in the comments below how she did. She will repeat the exact same process with a pomegranate syrup. And if you're worried only to buy the pomegranate syrup for this ice cream, Please rest assured that it is the best browning agent for your meat, so you're going to use it again and again. Once that she has done the first layer, she will repeat it for the second layer with the pomegranate syrup. And voila, within a few minutes she has two beautiful ice cream. For the last version, she decided to do a chocolate chip ice cream. She will add some chocolate chip to the first layer. Mix them in, then add some ice cream. After leveling the top of the ice cream, she decided to make this very cute and so appropriate for Rosh Hashanah, beautiful design on top of her ice cream. And within a few minutes, we have three beautiful different kind of ice cream for our Rosh Hashanah menu. I would love to know which one do you think you would prefer? The smiley face with the chocolate chip, the beautiful one with the pomegranate syrup, or the simple one with the chocolate syrup? Let me know in the comments below. 
After placing the ice cream in the freezer, I will take out my beautiful sweet and sour delight meat as it has been marinating now for a long time. I will place everything in a pan and I will let it cook uncovered for about 10 to 15 minutes for the sauce to thicken. While it is cooking, I will start another side dish. In my instant pot, I will put my cut potatoes in a steaming basket, I will add some salt, and then I will let them cook for about 4 minutes. And of course, if you do not have an instant pot, I will leave the cooking directions in the recipe link below. Because the main dishes are so rich, thank God, I will do many fresh salads to balance our meals for Rosh Hashanah. In a small food processor, I will add some pickles, and to be honest, I had to push them down a little bit to fit in the small food processor. I should have done it into batches, but who wants to spend more time in the kitchen than they should? After about 10 seconds in the food processor, I will add some mayo, then I will add some garlic, I will close the food processor and then I will mix everything until fully combined. Once it is done, I will transfer it to a glass container, close it and leave it in the fridge until we're ready to eat it for Rosh Hashanah. The sauce of the meat has reduced and therefore I will cover it and let it cook for about 15 minutes. The Moroccan cooked salad has completely cooled down and after adjusting the taste, I will simply put it in a glass container, close it, put it in the fridge until we're ready to eat it. The meatballs are ready for another basting session, so I will going to baste all the meatballs, then cover it and let it cook again until we complete the 40 to 50 minutes. Because I have used my instant pot, the potatoes are already cooked, so I'm going to place them in a bowl. Then I'm going to add some vegan butter or non-dairy butter. I'm going to add some garlic, some salt, and then I'm going to add my secret weapon, which is a non-dairy milk, which is called ripple milk it is delicious and so rich but any plant-based milk will do perfectly i will add my dairy-free milk to the bowl and then i will mash the potatoes i will not go all the way with mashing in my potatoes because i will use my secret number two to have the creamiest mashed potato which is to use my egg beater I know it sounds super funny, but let me tell you, I was fully skeptical at first, but after trying it, I saw that it gave me the best and fluffiest mashed potatoes ever. And of course, after adjusting the milk content and the spices, look at this. Just to give you an idea, our children fight to taste this mashed potatoes, and here is Leia and her oh, verdict. Leia? Very good! <laughs> So I highly recommend this method. Our sweet and sour delight is ready. I simply added some green onions and some red pepper and I'm going to refrigerate it until we're ready to eat it for Rosh Hashanah. Our meatballs are also ready. I will simply baste them one more time, then put them in the glass container and freeze them until we're ready to eat it for Shabbat if I prepared it in advance or just leave it in the fridge until we're ready to eat it. Our squash and roasted potatoes are ready, so I will take them out, I will let them cool down, and then I will put them in the fridge until we're ready to serve them as side dish on Rosh Hashanah. After a little while, the fourth meat is also ready, and I'm going to take the head of garlic and squeeze out the garlic. This will allow for the sauce to become thicker and also deepen the flavor. I will then add my carrots. Then I'm going to add some chickpeas. It is absolutely optional, but it just gives an extra zing to this recipe. I will mix everything and of course, because it is Rosh Hashanah, I have to add some honey to the mix. So I will add a bit of honey. I will mix it in fully. Then I will cover it and let it cook for about 20 minutes. As promised, here are a few of my round challah designs for Rosh Hashanah. I have already done a full video with detailed step-by-step -step instruction on how to make these 10 round challah designs, and I will leave the link above and in the description box below. And I would love to know which one is your favorite. Thank you for being here, it means the world to me. Know that in my book you are so important to me and I only want for you to have success and happiness in your life. 
If you're still with me until the end, please write in the comments. I love Rosh Hashanah prep, so I know I was not alone. I will also wish you a Shana Tova, a happy new year filled with love, laughter, and above all, peace and health. If nobody told you today, know that you are loved and you are enough just the way you are. Until next time, stay safe, stay blessed, and don't forget to from it up. I hope you don't mind if I say that I love